the grace of our Lord Jesus Christ be with you all. Good morning and welcome to online worship for Blacksburg Presbyterian Church. We're glad you're with us. If you would like to follow along in the bulletin, you can find that on our website under worship bulletins. You can also find their announcements, um, which are on the website as well as on the midweek email that we send each week. Even though we're not meeting in person, there are still quite a few things going on and things that you should know about that you will find there. Our interim pastor, Dave Kozad, is on vacation this Sunday and for the next couple Sundays. Bob Fiedler from Roanoke, who a lot of us know, will be offering our sermon today. And he also provided most of the liturgy for us. We would also like to say thanks to Nancy Artis and Ben Bailey for being our liturgists today. Um, ben will be reading the responses that would be the things that the congregation would say. So you'll see that text on the screen whenever Ben is speaking. Join in and be the congregation with him and also you're welcome to join in with any music that you would like. Be a participant as much as you can. This is the day the Lord has made. Let us rejoice and be glad in it. Let us call ourselves to worship. Why are our souls downcast? This is the day the Lord has made, so we shall place our hope in the Lord. Why are our spirits disturbed? This is the day the Lord has made, so we shall place our trust in the Lord. This is the day the Lord has made, so we shall rejoice and be glad in it. Together by cell phone, computer, and tablet, we gather to play Praise the living God. Please join me in prayer. Holy God, by your word and spirit. Come and transform your church to be a living sign of, of your love for the world. Where the poor are filled with good things, the dividing walls are broken down. And the dead are raised to new life through Jesus Christ, our Savior. Amen. Amen. 
A voice is crying out in the wilderness, prepare the way of the Lord. Trusting in God's grace, let us confess our sin. Lord, you know that we love you, and we know what you ask us to do. But for those times when we have been too busy, when we have been hard-hearted, when we have been lukewarm, we ask for your forgiving love. Prepare us for your way, O Lord. Your kingdom come, your will be done. Lord, you know our good intentions, and we know your will. But hold us back long enough to listen to those in need, to learn from them, and to learn of our own need. Where we are keen to teach, make us ready to learn. Prepare us for your way, O Lord. Your kingdom come, your will be done. By the power of Christ's resurrection, God restores us to new life, sets us on new paths, brings us from darkness to light, helps us choose hope. In Jesus Christ, we are forgiven. Amen. Peace be with you. So, have you guys ever heard people tell you God is always with you? Yes, no, yes, yes, no, no. Well, I've also heard that God is inside us too. Now, that might sound crazy, but I want you to hear me out. You always hear about people's stories where they felt God's presence or felt God around them. Those stories are really often, they're in nature or a really quiet place. And I think that's because in these really quiet places, they're alone with themselves, and they're able to think. And so what they don't realize is they're alone with God, because when they're able to really think about themselves, and when they're focusing on themselves, they're focusing on God. And when they have a conversation with, the, with themselves, they're having a conversation with God as well, because God is within them. But we can also talk about that with your neighbor. And I want you to think about how you're always told to love your neighbor as you love yourself. And this is because God wants to show your, you, God wants you to show love for your neighbor because God is inside your neighbor. And so when you show love for your neighbor and really when you, when you show love for yourself, even you're showing love for God because God is in all of us. And so now that you've learned that God is not only everywhere, but he's also inside you, inside you and inside me, I have a challenge for you. And this is a different challenge than last time. This challenge, it might be more fun. I have a challenge for you to do three things that show your love for a neighbor in the next week. Now, everybody's your neighbor. Your family is your neighbor. Your next door neighbor is your neighbor, but everyone you don't know is your neighbor too, because you're supposed to love everybody. And so these things can be big, it can be small, and it can be great if you do even more than three. But I'll give you some examples right now. I can see your faces. You're like, oh no, Sam, another challenge. But you could cook dinner for your family. You could send an appreciation letter to a friend. Or you, you could even just smile, say hello to someone in your neighborhood or someone, anyone that you've never even met before. But I hope that helps you learn about God within everyone else and God all around you. Now let's pray. Oh Lord, we pray that you can help us feel you inside of us and that you can help us see you in our neighbors and see the good in all of us around you. And we also pray that you can help us show our love for you by loving our neighbors and ourselves. Amen. Before I read our scripture for the morning from Matthew 25, 
Let us pray together a prayer of illumination. Let us pray. Speak to us, O God, with the voice of your Spirit, that we may know the way of Jesus Christ our Lord and follow you with energy today. Amen. Our Gospel lesson from Matthew chapter 25, beginning with verse 31. Let's listen for God's word to us today. When the Son of Man comes in His glory, and all the angels with Him, He will sit on the throne of His glory. All the nations will be gathered before Him, and He will separate people one from another, as a shepherd separates the sheep from the goats. And He will put the sheep at His right hand, and the goats at the left. Then the king will say to those at his right hand, Come, you that are blessed by my Father, inherit the kingdom prepared for you from the foundation of the world. For I was hungry, and you gave me food. I was thirsty, and you gave me something to drink. I was a stranger, and you welcomed me. I was naked, and you gave me clothing. I was sick, and you took care of me. I was in prison, and you visited me. Then the righteous will answer him, Lord, when was it that we saw you hungry and gave you food, or thirsty and gave you something to drink? And when was it that we saw you a stranger and welcomed you, or naked and gave you clothing? And when was it that we saw you sick or in prison and visited you? And the king will answer them, Truly I tell you, just as you did it to one of the least of these who are members of my family, you did it to me. Then he will say to those at his left hand, You that are accursed, depart from me into the eternal fire, prepared for the devil and his angels. For I was hungry, and you gave me no food. I was thirsty, and you gave me nothing to drink. I was a stranger, and you did not welcome me, naked, and you did not give me clothing, sick, and in prison, and you did not visit me. Then they also will answer, Lord, when was it that we saw you hungry, or thirsty, or a stranger, or naked, or sick, or in prison, and did not take care of you? Then he will answer them, Truly I tell you, just as you did not do it, to one of the least of these, you did not do it to me. And these will go away into eternal punishment, but the righteous into eternal life. The word of the Lord. Thanks be to God. I am pleased to be back worshiping with Blacksburg Presbyterian Church today. Since the last time I was with you, I've been spending a lot of time at home. Like many of you, I've been sheltering in place. My wife Dusty and I do a lot of reading, and we garden, trying to keep up with the weeds, and we watch more news on TV than in the past. Some commercials on TV catch my attention. For example, the world's greatest sunglasses for $19.99. Or something called an atomic beam flashlight for $19.99. And a super duper sealer to fix leaky gutters. Yes, it's only $19.99. Towards the end of these commercials, the announcer shouts, but wait, there's more. If you order today, we'll send you two pairs of sunglasses for the total price of $19.99. And I smile because I appreciate the marketing genius of the person who created the hook. But wait, there's more. And I appreciate this bold marketing ploy. But now, let's move on because in addition to watching these commercials, I've been watching this congregation over many years, 
and I appreciate this congregation, Blacksburg Presbyterian Church. Here's some reasons why. I'm currently the chair of our Presbytery's Mission Committee, and serving on that committee are three members of this congregation, Nancy Alexander, Melanie Smith, and Beth Matson. They provide strong leadership, whether about peacemaking, or SEDEPCA, or the Presbyterian Church of South Sudan, or other mission matters. And in February, members of this congregation led a workshop for the Presbytery on being an earth care congregation. Sarah Wines and others shared how they got started and what they've learned about living as an earth care congregation through worship, education, facilities, and outreach. As a result, two other congregations were inspired so that they are now focusing on earth care ministries following your lead. Over the years, your partnership in Malawi has brought leaders from Malawi to this area. When we served at Covenant Church in Roanoke, Blacksburg Prez shared speakers and mission programs, and you are still involved with mission work in Malawi. But wait, there's more. Blacksburg Presbyterian has had a strong emphasis on the arts for many years, both music and the visual arts. Artists like Joni Pinkowski have created visual art that graces your sanctuary and is displayed throughout the church building. You have been leaders in our presbytery in worship and the arts. And I can't forget that 40 years ago, your congregation helped create a mission partnership with SEDEPCA in Central America. I remember because 40 years ago, I traveled with some of your members on a 20-day mission trip to Costa Rica, Nicaragua, and Guatemala. I remember Forrest T. and Nancy Alexander and Woody Leach. They were brave participants on that early mission trip. So today, 40 years later, your relationship with SEDEPCA is still vital and active. And your congregation is still sending members on mission study trips with SEDEPCA and providing vital supplies like pure water kits. Yes, I have been watching this congregation and I appreciate Blacksburg Presbyterian Church. As a church in a university town, your congregation has remarkable talents and skills, and you have strong faith and a history of mission and service and a willingness to try something new. So why would such a talented congregation like this be interested in the great judgment scene in Matthew 25 today? What does the great judgment parable mean for Blacksburg Presbyterian Church as you plan your future during uncertain times and challenging times. Matthew 25 is one of the most memorable parables which Jesus spoke. The lesson is clear. Jesus will one day return to earth and be exalted as the ruler of the world. He will be vindicated after his suffering and his death and he will establish God's just rule. He will sit on a throne in glory. He will judge all people. In the great judgment scene of our scripture today, Jesus Christ will judge us all according to how we respond to human need. This parable seems rather simple. Giving a hungry person a meal or a thirsty child a drink, welcoming a stranger, visiting a prisoner. Anyone could do these simple things. Yes, we all could do these things. 
It is extending a helping hand to the people we might meet every day. According to the parable, there is a great reward for those who help others in these simple ways. The surprise is that those who helped did not think they were helping Christ. They were not calculating or seeking to earn an eternal reward. They didn't expect Christ's praise and blessing. They helped because they wanted to help another person in need. It was a natural reaction of a caring heart. Whereas the people who failed to help seemed to lament, if we had known it was you, Jesus, we would have gladly helped. We would have gone out of our way to help you, but we thought it was only some ordinary person who could wait or who wasn't a priority for us to help now. Here, Jesus confronts us with a wonderful truth and a terrible truth. The wonderful truth is that all such help which is given is given to Jesus himself. And the terrible truth is that all such help which is withheld is withheld from Jesus himself. And that's a terrible truth that can keep us up at night if we let it sink in. So here's the theological point. If you are a follower of Jesus and you want to show your love for God and you want to serve God, as you look around, you will not see God. God is invisible. If you want to serve God, Jesus says you find God in the woman who needs shelter. You will meet God in the family who needs food. And you will discover Jesus in the sick person who needs your assistance. You will find Jesus in the people all around you who need your help. So, why is the parable of the final judgment so important for Blacksburg Presbyterian Church today? Jesus is teaching that the final judgment of all people depends on how we respond to human need. Matthew places this teaching of Jesus as the final teaching before Jesus is arrested and then tried and crucified. This placement of the parable is Jesus' final teaching, and it highlights that it really matters. Jesus' parable focuses on what ultimately matters. And what ultimately matters is that we meet human need. That's how we serve Christ. That's how we show our love for Christ. And that's why a congregation like Blacksburg Presbyterian can learn from this parable because it highlights what ultimately matters to God. But wait, there's more. Your congregation is not alone as you face challenges of today. How do you maintain a vital congregation during a time when we can't meet together and when there is racial unrest and economic upheaval all around? When it comes to serving people in need, it is not easy today. When it comes to witnessing to the gospel of Jesus Christ with our words and our deeds, it is not easy today. It's not easy. The Presbyterian Church has guidance and resources and encouragement for this congregation. It's called the Matthew 25 Invitation. The Matthew 25 Invitation asks congregations to choose one or more out of three emphases. You may investigate the resources and ideas to help your congregation engage our world for the sake of the gospel. The three areas, choose one or more. And the first is building congregational vitality. The second, dismantling structural racism. And the third, eradicating systemic poverty. These are great challenges, but there are resources and encouragement for your task. 
Now, you may be thinking, aren't we already concerned about these matters? And aren't we doing things for them? That's great. The resources and suggestions are provided to support your work and encourage your work to help you follow Jesus Christ in the ways Christ calls for in Matthew 25. A congregation like Blacksburg Presbyterian Church would be asked to embrace one or more of these areas for action, like building congregational vitality by deepening and energizing our faith and growing as disciples as we share the gospel in word and in deed. You're already doing this, but there are resources and support from other congregational uh, Presbyterian congregations that will help you. In this time before you call new pastoral leadership, what a time, what an important time to focus on congregational vitality. Another area for possible action, dismantling structural racism by applying our faith to advocate and break down the systems and practices and thinking that underline discrimination, bias, and prejudice towards people of color. This congregation is already active through the Peace, Justice, Global Missions Ministry, and I've been reading the recent statement about racism and the 21-day racial justice challenge that many of you are following. That is just one of the resources provided by the Matthew 25 invitation. As we learn from our scripture for today, Matthew 25 invitation is a vision that seeks fullness of life for all people, including the least of these among us. The Matthew 25 invitation is offered for the sake of the whole world that God loves. It enables a congregation like yours to share the love and justice of God among all people, including those who are marginalized. It is a large vision, and yet Blacksburg Presbyterian Church has been blessed by God and is ready for the task. Oh yes, oh yes, there is more. The talent and skills that comes with this congregation we celebrate this and your years of faithful service and your heart for mission. As this congregation considers the Matthew 25 invitation, you will find encouragement and resources to help your congregation move forward in faithfulness. I'm going to be watching Blacksburg Presbyterian Church as you continue your faithful witness and you provide leadership for our presbytery as you seek to follow Jesus Christ in these challenging and fruitful times. God bless you. Amen. Let us pray. Lord Jesus Christ, shepherd and savior, you come to us in unexpected ways. Help us to recognize your presence in the faces of our neighbors in need so that we may love and serve you as we love and serve one another. In your holy name we pray. Amen. We trust in Jesus Christ, fully human, fully God. Jesus proclaimed the reign of God preaching good news to the poor and release to the captives. We trust in God, whom Jesus called Abba, Father. In sovereign love, God created the world good and makes everyone equally in God's image to live as one community. We trust in God, the Holy Spirit, everywhere the giver and renewer of life. The Spirit justifies us by grace through faith and binds us together with all believers in the one body of Christ, the Church. With believers in every time and place, 
We rejoice that nothing in life or in death can separate us from the love of God in Jesus Christ our Lord. Amen. Go forth in peace. The grace of our Lord Jesus Christ, the love of God, and the fellowship of the Holy Spirit be with you now and forevermore. Amen.